channel welcome to our live video series this one's gonna be a good one we've got a good week planned here from today's wednesday so we got wednesday through friday some interesting things this one is the 2022 hyundai elantra hybrid now a lot of people the most common thing i get told about this car is i didn't even know that car existed well it exists and apparently i have work to do if you don't know it exists so we're going to talk about today this is the first time i've seen it as well i drove it today i've gone through a test drive so we'll uh, talk about that and talk about uh, the good and the things maybe that i don't like so much and that's okay uh, we'll also have the ionic hybrid here on uh friday so that's coming up friday tomorrow we have a 2022 ex premium seltos and that's if everything goes according to plan and things could change so pretty uh cool little car here because i think it makes sense for a lot more people than you would think and there are some nice tweaks to this car that they didn't do previously on hybrids that they do do on this car so here's how this works if you are just uh, watching and you're not live with us and you want the content of this video you can skip ahead to the three minute mark about two minutes ahead uh, and that's where we'll start talking about the actual car in the meantime we'll give you some news and some notes and we'll let our live audience build and if you want to learn how to join us i'm going to show you how to do that right this second so let's flip the camera around here if you want to join us live at two o'clock eastern time on a weekday you just go to our youtube channel and you refresh the page exactly at two o'clock like i'm doing right now and our main video that was here is replaced by the live video that you see right here on the screen so if you click that live video you're going to have to watch an ad and if you watch that ad I'm gonna run a real quick one for you right here. If you are looking to buy a car in Ontario, uh, you connect with me. After this video is done, there'll be a link in the description with how to reach out to me. And I will connect you with either Brantford Kia, Brantford Hyundai. There's three dealers that support us. Brantford Kia, Brantford Hyundai, and Owen Sound Hyundai. Uh, those are the three dealers that uh, support us. So uh, any one of them that work for you, I will connect you with them. They will treat you the same way I would treat you. All right, we've run our ad. We've current, oh, I can't skip, oh, I missed the first ad. I gotta skip the second ad. Hold on a second here. All right, skipping the ad, there we go. All right, I can see myself on video. That's a good thing. All right, so another last minute. So what's going on? Like I said, Celto is coming in tomorrow with the EX Premium, the 2022 model. We haven't done that one yet. Uh, Ionic Hybrid coming on Friday. We haven't done that one yet. Today's uh, um, uh, Elantra Hybrid. We haven't done that yet. So a lot of new stuff coming up. And of course, we are not a review channel. So if you're just watching here right now, um, feel free to subscribe because we can pull all kinds of things coming in here. Someone just said, not hate, just asking. So I missed your first comment. Uh, let me find out here. Really think, uh, really think about this car. I don't know why. Choose, should I choose over the Corolla hybrid, same cost, or the Prius Tech? Uh, there we go. Yeah, so why should you choose this over another hybrid in the class? That, then this video is perfect for you. That's what we're going to talk about. And we're going to go really in depth. So give us about 10 more seconds. We'll get going on the video. If you haven't hit the like button already, guys, some of my regulars, maybe you could just drop a like right there and uh, we'll go from there. So here we go. Hey, everybody, it's Peter from the Kia Hyundai channel. Welcome to three minutes in on our video where we actually get going with the content. 2022 Hyundai Elantra Hybrid. So this one is a little bit different than some of the hybrids that we've uh, seen before because it's updated and uh, it's pretty cool. It's got some neat little features. So we're gonna talk about this in detail. If you've never been with us before, we're gonna spend about a half an hour with this car going really, really in depth. If that seems like a long time, hit the watch later button. You can watch it later, grab a snack, grab a beverage. It's gonna be worth it. We'll go through this car in more depth than anybody else on the internet right now. And if you wanna know more about this car or other cars that compete with it, maybe about the Ionic uh, hybrid that's also uh, out in the Hyundai dealers right now, we'll talk about that car on Friday. Just hit the subscribe button. We will fill your content with hybrid stuff, uh, both Hyundai lineup and Kia lineup. All right, first thing I wanna show you is just really quickly where it uh, falls in the lineup. Then we're gonna get into the car. Hyundai Elantra Hybrid is right here. It is the 24799 MSRP model. So it's a pretty good price for a hybrid vehicle. And of course you can go 27099 to go to the ultimate, but we have the preferred package today. And I just wanna show you one quick thing here. Um, these are all the hybrid or electric vehicles in the Hyundai lineup right now today. There's a lot. So we've covered just about every one of these, I believe. Maybe not the Nexo yet, not the Ionic 5 yet, but we will be covering them in detail. So um, a lot of really good choices for eco-friendly vehicles in the lineup. And like I said, if that's something that you're interested, hit the subscribe button and we'll cover you. All right, here we go. This is the key fob. I'm gonna put that in my pocket the whole time, but before I do, I wanna show you a couple little features. Obviously lock and unlock. Uh, obviously you can pop the trunk there and there's the panic button. This remote start button is something they never used to put on hybrid vehicles. Why? because hybrid vehicles are eco vehicles and eco drivers would never want to remote start their car ever because that's not the best for the environment. Okay, that's true, but we also live in the real world. And uh, what's cool is now they're putting some of these features that people are desiring because on sometimes those really cold days, 
you do want to remote start your car. And they're realizing that hybrids are becoming mainstream and they have to put mainstream options on these cars. So remote start. If you're an eco-friendly person and don't want to use this, then don't use it. Um, if you are someone who every now and then in the coldest winter days would really like to remote start your car, there you go. It's on the remote now. So that's kind of a new feature. It's kind of a silly feature. The other feature they never used to do is they never used to put spare tires in the eco cars. This car has a spare tire. We'll talk about that later instead of inflator kit. All right, we're going to dig in right now. Of course, I put that key in my pocket. You're going to notice that there's a little button on the door here. If you have your key in your purse or your pocket, you can just tap that button once to unlock, tap a double tap to uh, unlock all the doors, or you can set it up to just tap it once and have all the doors unlock. I'm going to do a video on that uh, soon, show, put it up online so you can see how to do that. Inside, of course, being the preferred model, the lower trim level, you do have cloth seats. I happen to like cloth seats. Uh, the rump roasters work better on them. The seat warmers work better. Over here, you've got sort of nice uh, sort of details in the trim here. Uh, leatherette, rubbery kind of feel look to this. And you've got the nice stitching in there. It is soft touch there. This is rubbery feeling, not leather feeling, but it is, again, soft touch. I don't know if you can see my hand digging into there a little bit, but it is soft touch there. And, of course, this is a little former touch. So nice trims in here, nice uh, features in there. Let's jump right in. Oh, i got to do one thing. I have a van parked over here, and I have a motion sensor light. So I'm going to try to trigger that light now so it doesn't turn off while I'm in the car because we're going to need some light in this car. I had to keep those vehicles in today. All right, so we're going to come over here. Interesting things going on on the dash. First of all, it has a push-button start, so I am going to uh, put it to the on position but not actually start the car. Sometimes hybrid cars can be started in here. And uh, there we go. Sometimes you can start the car here and there's no exhaust fumes, but sometimes the engine will turn on. So we're gonna go on, but not start it, just like we always do the gasoline car, which means you're gonna see some of these warning lights turn on in here. So only criticism I have of this car is, uh, first of all, we'll just cover the gauges. You can see there's your hybrid specific gauge. It is uh, charge, eco, and power. So that little bar is gonna come up and sit right around that level. When you hit the brakes, it's gonna show you how much it's charging. When you drive, it's gonna show you how much it's draining. If you really get into the gas, it's gonna tell you you're using a lot of power. So simple little gauge there that most hybrids have. My only complaint here is they use a little bit different dash than some of our other uh, vehicles. And the font is just a little tiny bit smaller. Now I can see it fine. I can even see it fine without glasses on. Uh, but I think for some people, it may be a little smaller and it's not really a concern because as you can see, there's a very clear high resolution screen there, which you can put your speedometer up. You can also put a lot of other things on there. Uh, anything with uh, fuel efficiency on here, I want you to ignore. We'll talk about fuel efficiency. Yeah, that's not accurate. We can do better than that there. Um, but as you can see, um, fuel efficiency is there. The only catch is because these are a little bit smaller. I mean, a lot of people just know where things are anyways. Uh, but you may want to use the digital speedometer. I just feel like that's the only complaint I have about this car. So I thought, you know, let's be honest and point that out. You can see the fuel range, about 855 liters uh, or kilometers of range on a smaller tank than the regular Elantra. So we're going to talk mileage in a little bit, but smaller uh, fuel tank, and you're still getting incredible range. Uh, and probably we can even beat that because I think this car has been a little bit worse than regular uh, mileage of what you could get. Over here is kind of a nice uh, screen. So you've got a lot of things going for you and a couple things that you could sort of tweak depending on the trim line you want. You have this AM, FM, and satellite radio here. So some of the uh, gasoline cars don't have the satellite radio included in their 8-inch screen. You do get that here. And it has wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now, it doesn't say wireless here, but anytime you see it says press this widget as opposed to plug in your USB uh, cord on our cars, that's what uh, tells you it's wireless. And basically, if it's an 8-inch screen with Apple CarPlay right now or Android Auto, it is wireless, the 10 and a quarter inch screen. So the bigger, wider screen, which is uh, available on the ultimate trim level of this car, at this point, it does not have wireless Android Auto or wireless Apple CarPlay. So kind of an interesting thing where the smaller screen actually gives you better features than the larger screen. So um, just something to keep in mind. That wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay uh, essentially gives you what feels like factory navigation right in here. So Google Maps, Apple Maps are some of the most updated maps in the world. And now you can call them up wirelessly at any point uh, if you have your phone uh, in your car. So that's kind of a cool feature there. So it kind of feels like you have navigation in the car, which makes a lot of sense. And uh, yeah, just, you know, kudos to them for the wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. Coming down here, you've got the best climate system we've got in a lot of our recent cars. It's an automatic dual zone climate system. So a lot of glare on my camera here. You can hear the fans are really picking up speed. Well, what I can do is I can slow them down 
So now what I've done is I've uh, tried to get rid of the glare. So any, you're seeing more glare here on your screen than I do in person. In fact, here you don't see any glare at all. Um, and I'm looking with two eyes, this has one. One eye shows you um, more glare. But what that button did there is we turned down the automatic climate control to no higher than a lower fan volume. What that does is it still sets the temperature or brings the car to the temperature you have it set to. It still moves the air around so that adjust this button automatically as you need to. But it can keep the car a little quieter and just take a little longer to reach that temperature, um, which some people kind of like. You don't get blasted with that cold air. And of course, you do have the dual zone system here. So 21 and a half there, 20 on the driver's side if I wanted to, which is kind of a nice feature. So we're going to turn it off for our video just to save some, uh, you know, noise and everything else. Uh, but really good system here. You'll also notice your heated steering wheel is up in here. So you can turn that on at any point. And you have your rump roasters for your driver and passenger side seats, um, front and seats. And of course, being cloth seats, they warm up very quickly. So overall, um, I really like a couple things in this car. Dual zone climate control is kind of nice just because, let's, you know, you get it. You and your passenger sometimes want different things. Rump roasters or heated seats and the heated steering wheel are kind of nice because if you've ever driven a hybrid, one way to kind of game the system, if you're like trying to hyper mile or something like that, is in the winter, you turn your heat uh, cooler a couple degrees. So instead of having to heat crank, you can turn it down a little bit. You use your seat warmers and your heated steering wheel to stay warm. And by not having to have the car quite as warm through the air vents, you actually save the gasoline engine from turning on. So if you've never heard what a hybrid is, gasoline engine and electric motor work mostly in tandem to power this car. But on slower speeds or even around town, uh, regular speeds, you can very often have this car switch to fully electric for short spurts, a few hundred meters at a time. Um, or at stoplights, stay off while the electric motor take care of it. Pull away from a stoplight uh, with the electric motor only. There's a lot of ways the electric motor can run only on its own. Um, and one of the ways to allow that to do extra is to limit your heating use. Now, you don't have to worry about that. It still gets fantastic mileage width. But if you're like me, you kind of game it a little bit. And you go, eh, I can go with 18 degrees, 17 degrees, 16 degrees. Uh, and you can use your seat warmers and your steering wheel heater to uh, keep that gasoline from coming on uh, as much, which is kind of a fun thing to do if you're, you know, nerdy like me. And if you're not nerdy like me, I apologize for my little rant there. All right, down here, USB, USB, and a 12-volt port behind a door over here. Uh, so you can see that down here and a space to put your phone. Nice big space there. You can see my, I can fit my hand in there easily. We'll show you the backup camera while we're here. Throw it in reverse. And you can see the nice uh, clear backup camera. Really wide angle, which is kind of nice. And you also have, um, you know, you can see every line on the floor, which of course is nice. The other thing you get is rear cross traffic alert. So if someone was to cross our path and we couldn't see them coming, it would warn us here on the camera with beeping and arrows and that kind of thing to tell us that someone could be crossing our path. And it uses the same hardware as your blind spot detection would use. So you've got blind spot detection in this car uh, and you've got that ability to use that same hardware in reverse for rear cross traffic alert, which is kind of a nice feature there. While we're talking safety features, let's just skip a hot cross to the wheel here. You have things like lane keeping assist, which is this button here. Of course, that does exactly what it sounds like. It helps you stay in the lane. What I really prefer is lane follow assist, which is right here on the steering wheel. Instead of just keeping you in your lane, lane follow assist can really use a lot of different uh, clues to keep you centered in the lane. And the car can actually steer itself to keep yourself centered in the lane. I love turning that on. It works really well. It sounds kind of creepy to people, but if you ever talk to somebody who drives a Tesla and say, tell me about autopilot, that's what they're gonna tell you about. It's not really autopilot and it's not full self-drive. You have to keep your hand on the wheel. Um, but same thing with this. It's capable of steering itself. It's advanced driver assistance systems, is what they call it. ADAS is what they call them. Uh, and this uh, Kia and Hyundai system is one of the best in the industry as far as uh, understanding where the road markers are, keeping you centered in lane, making it easier for you. And it does that using a camera up here facing forward, which also gives you um, forward collision avoidance assist. So in other words, it's capable of avoiding a collision with a vehicle in front of you if you're not paying attention. So don't test that. Um, test it like you test the airbags in your car. You don't do that, uh, but that's how that works. Um, so it's pretty cool. So that's a nice safety system there, that lane keep assist. Of course, you've got cruise control over here as well. Audio controls on the wheel with the Bluetooth. Let's come back down to that gear shift um, down here. You'll see there's a couple of drive modes in this car. We haven't talked about the powertrain yet. We should probably do that. You have 139 horsepower in this car. That's down from the 147 that you have in the regular gasoline engine. Does that matter? Nada. Because you also have like about 127 foot-pounds of torque. I could be wrong on that. But you have not a whole lot of torque in the gasoline engine. This car, in the hybrid, 
has 195 foot-pounds of torque, which makes it the same as the N-line turbo engine as far as a torque number. So torque is the power you feel, the accelerating power. So really power-wise, although you're a hair down in horsepower, overall power, you're kind of in between the N-line and the regular car. So you kind of, in my sense, in the way I would say is you gain power, you gain so much torque that the little bit of horsepower you lose is, is almost negligible. Um, so you've got good acceleration, and then the drive modes in this car, you've got the drive modes that I think make the most sense, uh, which is, let me just show you here. Oh, let's zoom in, make it easier for you. Oh, come on, there we go. Normal, sport, and smart. So of course, normal is just a normal drive mode. Smart is basically the new eco mode. It's always trying to fight for efficiency, but if you get into the throttle, it can move it to the normal or the sport mode all on its own. Sport mode keeps it in the revs, makes it a little more peppy, uses that electric motor a little more aggressively, and uh, makes it fun to drive. So really smart um, car. And let's be honest, you're not buying this because it's a sports car. You're buying this because you're commuting to work, you're driving around town, uh, you're doing your regular driving, and you're tired of paying 30, 40, 50% too much fuel by driving an identical car as this, um, but just using more fuel. So hybrids make a ton of sense because they're gonna work with you to save a whole bunch of fuel. And um, you know, it's also very comfortable with good technology. So coming down here, it is a six speed dual clutch transmission, which is different than something like a Toyota would as a CVT and all of their hybrids. You can throw it in drive, you can tap it this way and you can choose between your gears. Dual clutch transmissions are known to be on sportier cars. They're also very good for efficiency, but um, they're in my mind, a nicer transmission than a CVT um, for fun. Although both CVTs uh, and, and dual clutches are both good for uh, efficiency. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna quickly, uh, if you have a question, ask it right now. I'm also gonna beg you for likes. We got 24 people on. There's a few less people that watch these hybrid videos, uh, but they tend to do well over time. So feel free to hit that like button. Let these hybrid people know that it's there um, by showing them that this is worth watching. And uh, we'll go take your questions right now. If you ask them now, by the time I get there, they'll be in. They take it. There's a little bit delay to get them in there. And my light turned off. All right. Hey, but do you know when the Elantra N will come out? Uh, I do have some information on when that's expected, but I don't have it off the top of my head. So we'll cover that car in full detail when it comes out. I feel like the Kona end is gonna hit here first. Um, we've done, of course, the Veloster end, so that's a good question, uh, but we'll definitely cover it. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll definitely get notified about it because um, we're gonna cover that car in detail. All right, there's another uh, Kia question there. We're gonna leave that for a little bit later. We're gonna stick on topic a little bit with the Elantra right now. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about uh, hybrid systems and fuel mileage in a second. Let's just see if there's any questions. Oh, my computer went to sleep because I don't have it hooked up to the uh, big screen that I usually do. All right. Uh, I have called them rub roasters ever since I heard you say that for the first time. Yeah, rub roasters is kind of my thing. I, I like, I, I've said for years, they're rump roasters, it makes sense. Um, so I call the heated seats rump roasters and you can feel free to do that as well. Uh, if you do it at a dealership, you can just make mention that you heard it from me, yeah, do whatever you want. Uh, hey, would you know, okay, so any clue? Oh, that's the Rio. All right, so no questions on this car yet. So uh, we do have someone that's comparing maybe the Corolla Hybrid, and I think this is a good comparison. At the end of the day, I want you to drive the Corolla, and I want you to drive this car. And Toyotas are going to tell you on, hey, we've been doing hybrids forever, and plus we make the Prius. And Hyundai's going to be like, yeah, we've also made hybrids forever, and we make things. Uh, Kia Hyundai is very, very advanced in their electric vehicle type systems, hybrid systems. So uh, one of the leading automakers in the world for that. Let's talk fuel mileage. Uh, oh, I slipped it open. It's four point something, 4.4 combined, but I think it's 4.5 and 4.2. So 4.4 combined liters per hundred kilometers. Um, it is kind of incredible with a hybrid because city driving is basically the same. It's, it's pretty good in the city. It's pretty good on the highway, uh, but you get really good fuel mileage city or highway. So if you're buying a regular car to do regular car things, it makes a ton of sense to just consider the hybrid nowadays because some of the things that used to go on with hybrids is they used to put batteries in the trunk. And when you did that, you would lose a whole bunch of trunk space. So there's a lot of ways to open the trunk. Right now, I'm just gonna tap this button right there. Um, but you can see you have exactly no loss of trunk space in the Elantra. And a lot of people are buying, um, you know, like the Prius or something like that. Oh, it's a hatchback. So a hatchback has more space. Well. Let's talk about that. I like hatchbacks. I actually prefer hatchbacks. You can fold the seats down and you can fit really large items like dishwashers in hatchbacks, although not every hatchback. So let's talk about this car right here. Really good sized trunk here. And, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. There you go, that's what I'm trying to show you. I throw a teddy bear in as my trunk measurement tool into a lot of our videos so you can compare between my videos trunk sizes. And I have to admit, something like a Kia Soul, the teddy is squished in there, something like a, a Venue or a Kona, uh, sorry, a Kona, let's say, 
Uh, he's kind of, the end of the body of Teddy is where the end of the trunk is. You could fit an entire separate Teddy beside Teddy in here in this whole section. So you've got a lot of space in the trunk here, even though it's not a hatchback and really good height. Usually Teddy's tummy is touching it on the hatchback's um, panel that comes down, this privacy panel. But you can see you've got a surprising amount of height in there and a ton of trunk space. So really good trunk space, even in a hybrid. No battery uh, in the way in there. And as I mentioned before, a lot of these hybrid cars, oops, let me just throw Teddy over here. Poor Teddy's on the ground. A lot of these hybrid cars, they give you an inflator kit instead of a spare tire, but the Elantra says, nope, we're gonna give you a spare tire as well. So you have that. No real sacrifices over the regular car. And that's kind of the feeling I get is if you're just a regular everyday commuter, instead of optioning up the Elantra with a few little options that, you know, maybe make you feel a little nicer, why not just option up to the hybrid and uh, instead? So maybe you'll lose something like a sunroof, but you'll also gain, you know, significantly better fuel efficiency. So we're gonna show you under the hood in a little bit. We're gonna show you lighting. I'm also gonna show you the back seat. Just wanna double check to make sure there's no questions that I missed here because I didn't see a ton earlier and uh, I don't have my screen up. Usually I put the questions up on the screen so I get a sense of what I've missed, but uh, I didn't put it up because I figured the van was in my way today. All right. Oops, I'm missing here. Somebody says they're watching live for the first time. That's pretty cool. Uh, when will Sportage hybrid? Okay, so we're gonna talk about other hybrids in uh, Kia Hyundai lineup at the 30 minute mark. It's about eight or nine minutes away. Let me just finish with this car here. All right, rear seat room. Now I have the seat back about an inch too far. I don't think it matters for this video. I put it a little bit back further just so I could film. Uh, but you can see here, the Elantra also has really good rear seat space. So I'm gonna film myself getting in. Sometimes in lower cars, it looks like it's hard to get in and out. No big deal at all getting in and out. Head space, pretty good. Like I've got enough here, but a hand width above my head. I'm about six feet tall. I'm sitting behind myself as a six footer. And down here, you can see my leg is pretty much flat to the seat and I've got a lot of knee room. And again, oops, let me get a better angle of that. Again, this seat could easily move up an inch from my driving position, maybe even two inches. I did set it back a little bit further to be able to film. Back here in the preferred model, not a whole lot going on here. You have the nice plastic back seats. If you've got kids, you can wipe that clean. Uh, you've got a bottle holders in the door there. And across the back here, no vents and no um, USB ports. Now, that's a pro and a con. Everybody views that as a con. The pro being if you do have kids back here, they're not sticking their Cheerios down here or into the USB ports and causing, you know, more expensive damage than uh, it should be. So uh, kind of a pro or a con. Uh, I like USB ports, but, um, you know, if you have kids that are younger, this does also make a lot of sense. There are still vents back here that come through underneath the seat, but uh, no vents that they see, which is kind of nice. All right, let's jump out of here again. Oh, I'm showing the bad camera view again. One thing I'm gonna do is pop the hood for you because I rarely do that, but I think it's a little different in this car that you may wanna see. Why would you need a privacy screen in a sedan? Well, you wouldn't, that's the thing. Um, uh, you just have a little more space there. Okay, let me just try to pop this up. I'm gonna need two hands, guys, so bear with me for a second here as you get to look at probably not the best view of me or the car. Here we go. There we go. So underneath here, you have a 1.6 liter engine and an electric powertrain. Some people are worried about maintenance on these things and really hybrids as a class are the most reliable vehicles out there. You can check the data on that. They're very, very reliable. Uh, the electric side really doesn't have any maintenance or any additional maintenance. Oh man, you guys are making fun of things here. <laughs> yeah, I'm never gonna use that camera angle again. All right, uh, but hybrids as a class are very reliable and you have electric motor system that really doesn't require a whole lot of extra maintenance or anything. Uh, you're basically just maintaining a gasoline car like you always have. So gasoline engine, electric side, you can see it all kind of fits under here cleanly and easily. It does look full, but um, very simple to service. Uh, it's just a four cylinder, 1.6 liter engine and uh, easy to get to just about everything. So very simple uh, system that uh, works very well. One thing you'll see is a little battery hook up there. This car never needs to be boosted if the battery is uh, not 100%. So uh, sometimes the car will actually put itself in a sort of a sleep mode and you just have to press this button right here and that essentially boosts your 12 volt battery, starts the car up. Um, and sometimes a hybrid driver will have to use that button because like I said, this does put it there. How does the hybrid Elantra compare to the internal combustion engine in terms of reliability and repairs? Like I said, uh, as a whole, hybrids are among the most reliable vehicles out there. 
Um, repairs, that kind of thing. You're just maintaining a regular four cylinder engine. The hybrid system really doesn't require off the top of my head, any main is uh, at all that's different. Um, I've owned hybrids in the past. I own an electric vehicle now. Um, the hybrid component, because you're doing everything else with the car anyways, is being looked at, but uh, no extra, there shouldn't be an extra maintenance uh, repairs on there. And uh, reliability is excellent with these cars. And one of the reasons reliability is so good is because the engine does a, because the whole system takes care of itself, when you're accelerating, some of the hardest things you do on a car is accelerate from a stoplight. Well, it's using a lot of assistance from the electric motor. So the engine never works as hard as it would in a gasoline car. Somebody says, why is it beeping? Great question. I have the key in my pocket. And every time I open and close the door, it's like, hey, you took the key out of the car. Um, just be aware of that. So uh, yeah, actually it's not left leaving the key in the car. It's the fact that I took the key away because if I walk away with the key and my let's say my wife drives off in this car and goes parks at the grocery store. Uh, once she turns the car off, she won't be able to turn it on again. So it does warn you, hey, the person with the key is leaving and that's a really important thing to know. All right, we're gonna put this down without showing you the same camera view because that was a little too popular and I am not looking for popularity in that way. Okay, sorry for the camera view, but um, you made fun of the other one. Uh, all right, so we're gonna uh, show you the lighting here because lighting is a little different. Uh, LED in the back, but not LED up front. So usually when you get LED on the gas car, when you get LED lights out front, you get them across the whole vehicle. On this uh, vehicle, you have LED rear lights, but you don't have LED headlights. So the LED rear lights are pretty cool. Um, what frustrates me is when I'm filming it, these look more amber. This is the exact same color across here. There is a slight brightness difference, but you don't really see it at all. The camera really picks it out. So nice uh, sort of red color here that's not filming great. That is the identical color to the naked eye across here and over there. It really gives the illusion of width to this car and uh, looks kind of spaceshipy at night. I really like it. The camera is just really doing a poor job of filming it. I'll have to get this car at night one time and film there. The only other difference with the Elantra hybrid is you have a little different uh, setting down there. The very bottom uh, piece is a little bit there. Uh, and then if you come over here to the front side, sort of traditional stuff that we've seen before. You've got those um, white LED daytime running lights right there. And I'm gonna go to this side just to see them a little bit better. You've got the projector beam headlights with a nice sharp cutoff, which is kind of pretty nice. Uh, you guys are asking about battery replacement covered. Okay, let's talk about that really quickly. Uh, I get a lot of questions about um, hybrid stuff and battery life and is thing, are things covered? First of all, hybrid components have a longer warranty than regular gasoline uh, components. So that's a really good, important thing. Second thing is, when you go to a gasoline car and you go buy it, you always say to the salesperson, I assume, hey, how long is the transmission gonna last? Is it gonna last the life of the car? Um, it should, right? Like the salesperson wouldn't know. We never say that about a gas car. So when you buy a hybrid car, the very first question, well, how long is the battery gonna last? And you know, it should last the length of the car. Could it deteriorate a little bit over time? Yes, like a transmission, things are gonna deteriorate a little bit over time. In a hybrid car, because of the way the battery is used, you're never using the full battery. You're using kind of the middle portion of that charge. So even if the battery deteriorates over time, you really see no difference um, in the way the car works. So it's very rare to replace a battery in a um, hybrid car. Like I said, they are among the most reliable vehicles out there. The battery and hybrid components have a longer warranty than the regular components, um, unless things change for 2022. I haven't checked that, but we will check. Um, so we'll, uh, let me just flip that. Sorry, I had a notification I couldn't see there. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to double check for 2022. I'm sure that's continued. Uh, but yeah, it's not something that you have to worry about to the extent that you're thinking you have to worry about. Um, it's just not something that you run into. And then the next question people ask me is, well, what does the battery cost to replace? Uh, two things. One, I don't know. Um, it's so rare that it happens. Two, if you did a normal battery replacement, it would be under warranty for the first several years or you know, many, many, many kilometers. So by the time you may have to even consider a thing where it's out of warranty, uh, a battery, the prices of batteries right now are dropping like plummeting. So it's gonna be significantly less. Long story short, you never go to a gasoline car and say, how long is the transmission gonna last? The reality is it should last the length of the car. You never say, um, how long is the battery gonna last? It should last the length of the car. Um, but we can obviously talk about that more. You can look at reliability stats and those kind of things. And I'm happy to share that with you if you want as well. Uh, but the reality is we just don't replace a lot of hybrid batteries in anybody's make of car or anybody's make of hybrid. And that's why more of them are coming out as hybrid. It actually makes the gasoline engine work less and makes it last longer. All right. Look, someone's similar to the new Lexus taillights. Okay, that's cool. 
Um, da, 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 da. All right, so we're gonna cover a couple of little quick things in here. You guys had some questions about other things. When will the Sportage hybrids be coming out? So a couple good questions. First of all, let's talk Hyundai World. Tucson Hybrid, which is the Sportage competitor, it's already out. If you buy a top line Tucson, the top two trim lines, uh, they are hybrid. And you can also get it as a plug-in hybrid, which will be coming out very, 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 very soon. In the Kia lineup, the Sorento will be our next hybrid. It is coming out soon as well. We were in conversation with head office about that car last night. I don't have a date on that, but uh, stay tuned and closely tuned because I should find out a date on that very, very soon. Uh, so that's Kia and Hyundai line up there. Uh, like you see, hybrids, um, Hyundai has a few more right now. Kia's got the Nero. Um, we know the next generation Sportage uh, will be introduced probably in the spring. You guys are wondering if that'll have a hybrid. So am I. We haven't actually had power for Canada yet. So we don't know what's coming out in that yet. Um, so yeah, Sportage looks nice in the opinion. That's cool. Um, Sportage, like I said, no official confirmation of the powertrains in Canada yet. As soon as we find that out, I'm going to make a video, so it's another great reason to subscribe. Uh, but the Sorento will be our first uh, uh, PHEV and uh, hybrid in, uh, that, in Canada, which of course the Santa Fe already has the hybrid out, so you can compare that model, and uh, the PHEVs are coming. So there we go. 2022 hatchback for Canada release date. I think we have 22 Rios already in stock, or maybe not in stock, but we can order them. For 2022 model year in Canada, the Rio is a carryover, so that's a good question as well. Um, if they're looking for redesign, uh, next redesign we're trying to figure out is uh, the Kia Forte in the Kia lineup, which will then put the Kia Forte kind of on par with this car. Uh, I think the Kia Forte will be called the K3. That hasn't been confirmed either. So there we go. That's this Kia and Hyundai roundup there. Um, what else got? I think that's all the questions we have. So I think what we'll do is we'll leave it here. But remember, we are not a review channel. We are actually a dealer group channel. And uh, if you want uh, to see more videos on this car, you can just ask for it. And I'd be happy to pull this car back in again, again, and again, and again. Or the other trim lines. We're going to cover all the trim lines. So really good reason to subscribe. Really good reason to fill the comments with any questions that you have. Like I said, the Ionic Hybrid, we'll have it here on Friday. So you can watch us live or in the replay. And uh, just a really good reason to subscribe if you're interested in any Kia or Hyundai vehicles. Uh, we could cycle them all through here and we'll cover them in detail. And I love talking about electric vehicles and hybrids. I love talking about the Santa Cruz, which is, you know, not electric hybrid. Uh, so whether, whatever car it is, I love talking about them and we'll cover that. Also, if you're looking, if you're a Kia or Hyundai owner right now, we're going to do what we call Kia Hyundai classes, which are three to five minute videos explaining the features on your car. A lot of those have been really popular because we've kind of hit on features that people didn't realize their cars have. So feel free to subscribe to that. Uh, we fell short of, I think, my like goal today. We got 37 people on. We got 26 people that said, yes, this is worth a like. So I'm going to stay on for just a minute here, give you the opportunity to hit that like button, and uh, we will jump out there for you. Bruce Michael just said, smash the like for Peter. Yeah, that'd be cool if you could do that for me. Yesterday, we celebrated 10 million views, and because you guys watched 10 million times, uh, my boss has decided it was a good idea to give me a lawnmower. Weird things happen here, and it's kind of fun. So, so <laughs> that's what happened yesterday. Uh, if you missed yesterday's video, you can see it in the first few minutes of that video when that happened, which was a surprise to me, which was kind of fun. All right, that's it for today, guys. Like I said, tomorrow, Kia Seltos EX Premium. So that's the top trim line without the turbo engine. And then on um, uh, Friday, Ionic Hybrid. So we can continue the hybrid uh, class of this car, very similar powertrain in that car. And we'll talk about that then. I want to thank everyone for joining, and we will see you again tomorrow at 2 o'clock.